Well, that's right. We're continuing to monitor this storm and seeing what we expected as we headed in as the storm headed into the northeast, which was uh, that the bulk of the rain would be on the north and western side. This is the satellite imagery. Notice all the oranges and yellows located to the north and west of the storm. This is a lot of dry air where you don't see those oranges and yellows. It's wrapping all the way around now, and that's why our bands of rain will be more intermittent. But just as our reporters have noted in the field, we are in the midst right now of a fairly heavy rain band, and I'll show you that on the radar coming up. Up here, but it's a category one hurricane down slightly this morning at 75 mile an hour winds. It is starting to accelerate to the north northeast at about 18 miles an hour. So it's moving at a fairly good clip, especially compared to the last few days. And we're going to be watching very closely that first high tide coming up here at eight o'clock this morning. Let's go ahead and take a look at the latest statistics from Hurricane Irene. This is the radar imagery here. Uh, it's a category one hurricane gust to 90 miles an hour. It's moving to the north northeast at about 18 miles per hour right now. Now. And uh, on the radar, you can see where boy, it's just downpouring uh, along 295, 95 portions of Kent County here when those yellows and oranges getting into some of those very heavy downpours. And when you combine that with what we're seeing now, which are 35 to 45 mile an hour gusts and spots, that's quite creating that sideways rainfall, making it very difficult to be out and about in it. And the sort of tropical storm force wind gusts that we're getting are going to become more sustained, and we expect that to continue throughout the entire day. So it's going to be the combination of uh, waterlogged ground here. It's very saturated and soggy and you get those sustained winds at tropical storm force and gusts potentially near hurricane strength. And we're talking about down limbs and branches and perhaps even some down trees and power lines. So there's a tornado watch. This is one of the other big headlines from this morning issued for our south coast until 11 o'clock in the morning. The watch means there's the potential for a tornado. Now it's typical in these landfalling hurricanes on the northern and eastern side, right where we are to see weak, short lived tornadoes. We're talking EF zero, EF one, uh, possibly spinning up in the rain. Hurricane warning down along the coast, tropical storm warning for our inland areas. That flood watch continues again, as we've been mentioning, the heaviest of the rain is going to be located on uh, north and west. These are actually uh, flood warnings over parts of Connecticut and even uh, western Massachusetts right now where as much as four to eight inches of rain is possible two to four over much of Rhode Island and Bristol County and you'll get even maybe just an inch or two out towards the Cape and the islands. These are the wind gusts as of last hour we got 45 mile an hour gust in Groton, 43 mile an hour wind gust in Westerly and 40 on Block Island. So we're starting to see, especially over Rhode Island, tropical storm force winds and over Connecticut, uh, over Massachusetts, we expect them to continue to strengthen through the morning as well. Notice how large the wind field in, is for Irene. Uh, the yellows are those tropical storm force winds. The oranges and the reds are the hurricane uh, wind gusts here. So again, the latest track from the National Hurricane Center brings it right to the east of New York City. They're going to get hammered there. They're going to get the storm surge just as we are. This is two o'clock in the afternoon uh, today. Still 70 mile an hour winds as it's up into uh, northwestern Connecticut and then it races up through New England. So the storm surge again for this morning is going to be uh, carefully watched. It's very difficult to time these things out. We're going to see a strong onshore wind, but more of an east southeast component. I think this would be a more dangerous storm surge if we had a strong due south wind and we don't have that with this storm because it is located fairly far off to our west. Still you get a lot of water being pushed up by the forward motion of the storm with those winds gusting 55 to 75 miles an hour and that should create a storm surge around two to four feet in the upper part of Narragansett Bay and in Buzzards Bay as well. Here's what we're looking at in terms of uh, the impacts from this storm system. Two to five inches of rain on average Average peak winds for most of the day should be around 30 to 50 miles an hour with gusts as high as 70, maybe even a few gusts to 75 miles per hour at the coast. Most of those strong winds are going to be found along the south shore and the surge in the morning should be about two to four feet. But in the afternoon, we could see three to six feet in Narragansett Bay, but as much as seven foot storm surge and that's going to cause some damage and some beach erosion in Buzzards Bay during that evening high tide. So the main impacts are going to be beach erosion. We've got that tornado watch. We're going to see a likely widespread power outages with trees, limbs and wires down. And of course that coastal flooding that's going to continue as we go into not only this morning's high tide, but this evening's high tide as well. Back to you.